There are some pretty gross deaths in the Bible, but there's one that tops them all. And it takes place in a beautiful theater on the Mediterranean coast, and it's a very public event. I hope you don't get too grossed out by the story behind the story of worms, worms, and more worms. After the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of the Lord, the church is born on the Jewish feast of Pentecost, AD 32. In the early years, the church grew at a nearly exponential rate. In Acts 1, verse 15, the church numbers about 120. After Peter's sermon at Pentecost, about 3,000 are added to their number. And in Acts 5, verse 14, we read that more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As the church grows, Herod Agrippa I, king of Judah from AD 37 to 44, puts James, the brother of John, to death, and he arrests Peter, who makes a rather spectacular jailbreak. Later, in AD 44, we learn in Acts 12, verse 20, that Herod had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon over trade agreements. King Herod I, who reigned from 37 BC to 4 BC, had spent a great deal of time building an artificial deep water port on the Mediterranean coast at a city he named Caesarea Maritima. For centuries, Egypt had been the food production center of the ancient world, and Egypt shipped its goods north up the Via Maris the main international trade route that paralleled the Mediterranean coast up to Tyre and Sidon, natural deep water ports, who then shipped goods via the maritime routes to the rest of the Roman world. By building a deep water port at Caesarea Maritima, Herod shunted goods to a closer port, isolating Tyre and Sidon and severely damaging their economy. At the time of Herod Agrippa I, Representatives from Tyre and Sidon sought audience with the king to resolve their trade disagreements, and they held a meeting in the theater at Caesarea. The theater is a beautiful example of Roman architecture, and it's unusual in that it faces west, right on the coastline. Nearly all Greek and Roman theaters faced either north or south, so the sun would not be in the eyes of the actors or the audience. As the assembly gathered in the theater, Herod Agrippa I moved from his palace in Caesarea, a mere five minute walk, to the theater. At daybreak, he enters from the north entrance, striding across the stage, and takes his seat. Josephus, the first century historian, describes the scene in his book, Jewish Antiquities, in a garment woven completely of silver, so that its texture was indeed wondrous. He entered the theater at daybreak. There the silver, illuminated by the touch of the first rays of the sun, was wondrously radiant, and by its glitter inspired fear and awe in those who gazed intently upon it. Immediately, his sycophants began saying, oh, there's a God, and we read in Josephus, that because the king did not reject their flattery, he was gripped in his stomach by an ache that he felt everywhere at once and that was intense from the start. He collapsed on the stage, was carried back to his palace, and after five days, he died. Acts 12 verses 21 to 23 gives an abbreviated version. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, this is the voice of a God, not a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. How cool is that? So what happened? In great likelihood, Herod was a victim of guinea worm disease. 
skinny worm disease is a parasitic worm infection that today affects very poor people, primarily in sub-Saharan Africa. People get infected when they drink water containing a tiny flea that's infected with the even tinier larvae of the guinea worm. Over the course of a year in the human body, the immature worms pierce the intestinal wall, grow to adulthood, and mate. The males die, and the females make their way through the body, maturing to a length of as much as three feet and ending up near the surface of the skin. The worms cause swelling and painful burning blisters. To soothe the burning, sufferers tend to go into the water where the blisters burst, allowing the worm to emerge and release a new generation of millions of larvae. In the water, the larvae are swallowed by small water fleas and the whole cycle begins again. A few days or hours before the worm emerges, the person develops a fever and they have swelling and pain in the area where the worm is. A blister develops and then opens into a wound and the worm begins to emerge. Infected people usually do not have symptoms until about a year after they drink water contaminated with the infected fleas. And the disease becomes apparent as the adult worm begins protruding from the skin. Although limited mostly to very poor areas of sub-Saharan Africa today, guinea worm disease was common in the ancient world. And this is probably what afflicted Herod Agrippa I. So, I hope you were not too grossed out by the story behind the story of worms, worms, and more worms. We hope you've enjoyed this week's Bible Blast with Dr. Bill Creasy. For the most comprehensive Bible teaching on the planet, join Dr. Creasy at LogosBibleStudy.org. That's LogosBibleStudy.org. See you there.